Hi everyone, I'm Siddharth Mishra from the product management team at Coecity and thanks a lot for spending your day with uh, Coecity. So as uh, Apoor and Anand covered initially, so uh, Coecity always had this vision to serve our customers uh, by enabling them to look inside the backup and unstructured data that la lands on Coecity. So for this, we made a very big announcement this week is the launch of the application marketplace to help customers extend the value of the data that resides on Coecity. And it has three main pillars. So first pillar is the application marketplace, which provides customers the ability to browse, search, download, and get the apps and then run them on Coecity's data platform. This is a <laughs> truly platform model with both Coecity's own apps as well as third-party applications developed by independent software vendors. And last but not the least, uh, some of you alluded to, uh, there were questions asked around, can customers write their own apps and put it onto the marketplace? So we also launched an apps SDK, using which uh, customers as well as independent developers can build applications which can run directly on top of Coecity's data platform. So these are the three main pillars of the application ecosystem, using which customers can get apps, run the apps, and get insights from their backup and unstructured data. So now let us look at why is this such a big differentiator for Coecity. So in this application ecosystem model, uh, Coecity is directly bringing compute to the data by enabling these apps to run in containers on top of Coecity. We also have a marketplace which has both our own apps as well as third-party apps, which is a very big difference if you look at the backup and the unstructured uh, data world. And last but not the least, uh, through Helios, we are able to orchestrate the application onto any cluster where the required data sits and provide it access to any data that is sitting on Coecity across the globe. In addition, as Apoor had mentioned in his architecture diagram, we expose data on NFS, SMB, and S3 protocols, and thus we can make the data available in the format that the application requires. So with that, uh, Without spending more time, I would like to give you an end-to-end -end, uh, flow of how the marketplace looks like, how to get the application, and then give a demo of the Splunk application. We'll also cover uh, the Insight application, which is a data discovery application that Coecity has built. This is the application marketplace on which uh, you can find seven applications. Four of these applications have been developed by Coecity. Three are written internally all by our own developers, and the fourth one, Clam AV, is a file antivirus application which was open sourced by Cisco uh, that Coecity's uh, brilliant developer team sort of uh, made it into an application. Along with that, we are extremely proud to announce our partnership with three <coughs> application vendors such as Plunk, Sentinel One, and I minus Data. Is this a sort of bring my own license kind of thing, or yes. do you charge something? You're not charging 30% so, for uh, having them hosted there? I think, uh, so <laughs> I think that would be uh, the desired state, but to begin with, if a customer has an enterprise... So you want to make money on your partner? Sometime in the future, okay. but this is like we are too early right now. So the first goal for Coecity in this particular year is to enable these apps to run on the data platform to help customers look inside their dark data and not treat the data sitting on Coecity as an insurance policy. The goal is to make uh, the platform better for our customers. If a uh, couple of years down the line, we see that there is a win-win scenario for both us as well as our partner and the customer, we are open to having that. But as of now, as you rightfully said, Enrico, it's a bring your own license model for third-party applications. And for our own applications, like these four applications, they are free of cost. So this is the application marketplace. Uh, you click on a specific application and it will take you to the application page, which will provide the details. And from here, you can do a get app. So I already have the Splunk app pre-installed because we had less time, so I had installed it. So I'll show you uh, like an installation process with Insight. So Insight is a data discovery app that we made. So you click on get app. And as soon as you click on Get App, I am already logged into my Helios account, so it uh, doesn't prompt me for my Helios credential, but it shows me the clusters which are connected to my Helios account. So I just click on the particular cluster, or I can do an install later. So I do an install later. It 
uh, brings me into my Helios uh, page uh, for that particular application. So from here, what I do is I can go to uh, my applications page, which shows me all the apps that are owned <coughs> by me as a customer. So on the marketplace, you saw seven apps. But in this Helios uh, page, you see four apps which me as a Helios customer currently own. So from here, it also gives me a glimpse of which all clusters are the apps currently installed on. So the Splunk app is installed on two clusters. Similarly, the Helios app is installed on, installed on one cluster. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, directly do a pass through to the cluster from Helios and come to the cluster page. So at this point of time, uh, if you see, we have passed, done a pass through to the Bangalore cluster. And uh, these are the apps which are there on the Bangalore cluster. So I will do a run app. When I do a run app, it is effectively creating the app instance. Uh, so this is the QoS thing that Apoor was mentioning earlier, that we have QoS built in the data path itself. And for applications, also, we leverage the QoS. I then select the views to which this particular application should have access to. And then I give a description to help me understand the to help me understand and figure out the app instance later. So if 10 admins are accessing the cluster and you have created one particular instance of the app, how do you, how do you come and figure out, OK, this was my instance versus this was someone else's instance? So you can give a description, and it will show you. So how many Kubernetes pods are you running across the Bangalore cluster? So it depends on the number of apps that you want to instantiate. Uh, so for example, if you are just in instantiating one app, it will uh, bring up Kubernetes pods across all the nodes on the cluster. Then if you are running another app, it will bring up pods for the other app as well. So it will depend on the number of apps that you want to run. So it's one pod per app. <coughs> node. One per node and per I'll app. Let, yeah. yeah. I'll let Sachin uh, describe if there is any more to it. So Sachin is the engineering lead on the project. Yeah, each, each of the application is essentially a distributed application, right? Uh, so like, for example, our Uh, yeah, since we do have, like, a customer could have hundreds of nodes, <coughs> all of these applications are also built like a distributed application. For example, our insight, we will have maybe uh, various kinds of uh, pods, and uh, each of the pods could have various replicas. So that depends on the application, but yeah, <coughs> basically horizontally scale out. So we'll have lots of pods for any application as well. But that customer doesn't need to worry about that part. All he's saying is, I want to run this application at this level. And depending on the resources we have, depending on the cluster size, we will sort of create appropriate number of these pods and sort of fork them on Kubernetes. So moving on. So now these uh, pods have been instantiated, and the app is up and running. Uh, so it takes <coughs> 30 seconds for the pods to come up. Uh, so it gets the image from a Docker repo that we are running within the cluster. And then when I click on Open App, uh, so at this point of time, this is the Splunk Enterprise app with the forwarder, with the indexer, and the search head running directly on top of Coecity's data platform. So I already have the license for this particular uh, edition. Uh, so I log in. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, I already have. So if you remember, when I was creating the app instance, at one place I went to the views and selected the views to which the app should have access to. So that view already has the data that we want to analyze using Splunk for the purpose of this demo. So it will take a few seconds for the data addition screen to come up. Uh, so uh, currently, uh, so now that <coughs> that screen is up, so we go and do an add new. So I add the data. So the data that we have is essentially CSV files, which contain the purchase history of the government over the last several years. So if you have to do a spend analysis on where the money is going, so that is the data that we have for this demo purpose. Uh, so, so I just go to item name, look at the top values, and uh, so now, since this is a fully functional Splunk app, I can just do create any kind of visualizations. And it will show me 
like from that CSV file, where has the maximum amount of money been spent to? So in this way, if you see, uh, there is no need for any additional copy of the data once it has landed onto Coicity. So you can just bring the application to the data. You don't create any additional copy. There is no separate infrastructure that was required to run the application. And in a matter of few clicks, the application was provisioned and it was up and running. So it also saves admin from the headache of provisioning the infrastructure to run the application. So this is the application ecosystem initiative that we have embarked upon. And we believe that as we uh, figure out more and more use cases going forward, we'll be able to make a holistic and a very strong application ecosystem for our customers, which will help them derive more and more insights from their data.